Dear C, Belgian filmmaker Thierry Michel accused of plagiarism by DRC. Belgian filmmaker Thierry Michel is being sued by the DRC by documentary making partnership the Balafu Brothers. Gilbert Balafu Mbaye and Balafu Bakupa Kayinda accused Michel of plagiarizing their 2015 film The Silence of Forgotten Crimes. It follows the release of Michel's 2021 film Empire of Silence. Balafu Brothers have claimed there could be as many as 80 elements in comparison with their film. The brothers claim that the same narrative structure as well as the technical cutting and even the synopsis was taken from their film. The Belgian filmmaker has denied the accusation and say it is an attack on freedom. The brothers want the film banned, seized and the Belgian filmmaker convicted. If convicted, the filmmaker could face up to five years in jail. Brazil. For the first time, Brazil censors count black communities founded by enslaved people. For the first time in its 132-year history, the Brazilian censors, now underway, will finally include members of the Quilombo communities founded by runaway enslaved people. On Ilha de Mer, an island with several colimbos off the coast of Salvador in northeast Brazil, this chance to be counted is one step in a political transformation for which local organizers have long been fighting. Brazil's updated census and the rising number of black candidates are part of a slow reckoning with century of slavery that ended only in 1888, making Brazil the last country in the world to abolish the practice. Quilombos were formed over centuries by enslaved people who escaped forced labor to create isolated self subsistence communities in remote forests and mountain ranges or on islands like Ila de Mer. Quilombo residents now hope that a proper count of their numbers and more elected voices will open the door to improved social services and guarantee of rights for people and places long left of the official maps. National Colimbo Association has identified nearly 6,000 Colimbo territories as government recognition of the communities gained steam under former President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva two decades ago when the communities won more formal land rights and support for cultural programs but President Jair Bolsonaro has dismantled many of those programs and slowed the recognition of additional Colimbos. Bolsonaro was fined 10,000 US dollars in 2017 for insulting Colimbo residents, saying that they do nothing and are not even good for procreating. An appeals court threw out the case because he was a federal lawmaker at the time. On Ila de Mer, Colimbo residents have for generations survived on the hard work of artisanal fishermen and fisherwomen. Uganda Take away your ego, our eco project will go on, Museveni tells EU Parliament off on the pipeline project. President Museveni has slammed the EU Parliament over its recent resolution condemning the East African crude oil pipeline project ECOP and calling for it to be delayed. The President was speaking during the annual Ugandan International Oil and Gas Summit at Serena Hotel Kampala. A few weeks ago, the EU Parliament voiced concern over human rights violations in Uganda and Tanzania linked to investments in the 1,445-kilometer-long pipeline that draws crude oil from wells in western Uganda in Hoima district to Tanzania's seaport of Tanga. The EU lawmakers consecutively asked Total Energies to take a year before launching the project to study the feasibility of an alternative route. Both the Uganda and Tanzania government have seen defied the resolution but also blasted the EU lawmakers over the same. President Museveni re echoed the voice of both governments, insisting that the EU parliament cannot decide what is right for the East African countries. He stated that the EU parliament has got much work to do in their own place and he would advise them to spend much time helping some of their own people. East Africa has capable people who know what to do, he said. 
Museveni explained that whereas reducing carbon emissions to the atmosphere is the ideal thing, Europe accounts for the biggest percentage of emissions and should therefore take the first step in correcting the wrongs before Africa follows. Museveni said that countries cannot completely do away with oil because it produces carbon, which is useful for life. Quoting his secondary school organic chemistry, the Ugandan president said, all living creatures, including plants and animals, need carbon to live, noting that a reasonable amount of it is required. Ghana, Chinese boss, slits the throat of Ghanaian worker. A Chinese man has allegedly slit the throat of his Ghanaian employee at Kwekuma, a suburb of Takoradi in the Sekodi Takoradi municipality of the Western region. The Ghanaian, whose name has been given as Isaac Borteng, is among the construction workers the said construction firm works with. The Chinese company, which the accused person works for, is constructing apartments close to the Ghana Navy flats in Takoradi. According to reports, the Ghanaian workers have not been paid their salaries for months and were agitating that their monies be paid. The workers, who are all Ghanaians numbering 80, are paid a daily wage of Ghanaian 18 CD, but for several months their salaries have been in arrears despite insistent demands. In the heat of the agitations, tempers went overboard, which resulted in the Chinese boss pulling a split knife and slashing the throat of the Ghanaian employee. The timely intervention of the military men in the area prevented any reprisal attacks from the other workers gathered as the whole area where the incident occurred had been spilled with blood. Meanwhile, the injured worker has been admitted to hospital where he is fighting for his life. Unfortunately, the perpetrator of the crime is said to be walking free without any arrest while his victim is fighting for his life in the hospital. South Africa, white pastor who planned black genocide, jailed. A white supremacist who was plotting the genocide of black South Africans and a coup in the country has been jailed for life. Harry Cosen, 64, was the leader of a far-right terrorist group and had led plans to overthrow the government on 28th November 2019 using AK-47 rifles, hand grenades, and rocket launchers. Kosen even wanted to use biological weapons to wipe out black people the Pumalanga High Court had. He sought to justify his beliefs on religious grounds, claiming that God had ordained that he should reclaim South Africa for white people. In total, Kosen has been handed two life sentences plus 21 years behind bars for terrorism-related offenses. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share, and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.